cheap and easy nylon strung guitar customization or modification. I found these quite by accident whilst I was searching for flamenco guitar strings on eBay and just by using the search phrase flamenco guitar strings it not only threw up the guitar strings but it threw up these as well in various different colours. And you can see why they've come up because the keywords are mentioned in the title. And let's face it, who would be looking for these? And even if you were, what would you call them? And I can see the association, because it's not unusual to see a flamenco guitar decorated around the bridge at the end of the strings with coloured twine. And because I'd never seen them before, and because they were so unusual, it was a no-brainer that I was going to review them to make sure they have no derogatory effects on the guitar. And if they do work, it would be a great thing to draw to people's attention, especially youngsters with classical guitars. I ordered them where I found them on eBay, and they came within a couple of days. And that was during lockdown as well, so no complaints there. Right, let's unpack the jiffy bag they came in so we can take a good look at them. They came supplied in little black velvet bags, which I think would make them a great gift because they look really good. But if you sent them as a gift, be sure to enclose the instruction sheet. Because if you just sent someone a little velvet bag of beads without any description or any instructions what to do with them, you wouldn't have any idea what they were. And if you wanted to send a set of these overseas, it shouldn't cost too much either weighing only about 4 to 5 grams or 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 ounces. I've got three packs of these. I got the white set, the black set and I got the red set just to demonstrate one of the colours. But they've got multiple colours. And if you get these from eBay you can actually message them and they'll even mix the colours for you so that if you've got some favourite colours or a flag or something you want to replicate those colours you can do this on your guitar. I obviously got the boring colours because I'm an old man. Right, let's take a closer look at them. And you get six beads obviously and one of them they provided with a wire threaded through it so that you can see how you're supposed to wind the strings through, which I think is a really clever idea. When you look closely, you can see they're not just a simple bead. The first thing you notice is they've obviously got three holes in them, and the holes are countersunk, so there isn't any sharp edges to catch the strings. And on the back side, you can see it's got a lip all the way around so that the string isn't digging into your bridge. They're quite small, which is probably why they come in the little bag, because they'd be quite easy to lose. And they're made of a kind of plastic, which is certainly strong enough to do the job, and it's a kind of typical material you'd find something like this made of. And it's described in one listing as a selected plastic polymer. The first set of beads I'm going to fit on this Yamaha and the reason I've chosen this guitar is because with not having a body to affect the resonance or the sound, all the sound is picked up directly through the bridge. And what this means is any effect the beads might have on the tone for the positive or the negative I'll be able to hear far more clearly. And the results of this should obviously be a far more accurate and honest review. And the first thing I need to do is decide which beads I'm going to put on this particular guitar. And I think it's either going to be black or white, because it's a very classy instrument. And I think any gaudy colours would just look completely out of place. But the good thing is, you can just put the beads on top of the guitar to see how it's going to look, which is what I've done. And I've tried a complete set of the white ones, a complete set of the black ones, and a complete set of the red ones. And I also tried 
a mixture of black and white. But in the end, for this guitar, I think I'll stick with white. Right, let's fit them on the guitar. Firstly, I'm going to try fitting the beads without taking the strings completely off. And to do this, I'll have to take the pressure off every string. So I'll just do that first. And I've speeded this process up because it's obvious what I'm doing and it'd be really boring to watch at regular speed. As you're loosening the strings, you want to keep checking the tension to see if you've got it loose enough to the point where you can untie the string at the bridge. And once you feel you've reached that point, we can go to the other end and start untying. And it's becoming abundantly clear that trying to fit them without removing the strings is either very, very difficult or not possible at all. So I'm going to remove the strings and then I'll replace the strings and fit them on the end of the new strings, which will be far easier. I'll thread the bead on the end of the string whilst the strings off the guitar to make it really easy and also so I can hold the bead in front of the camera so I can show it you in as much detail as I possibly can. And the process is, I'll push the string from the back through the top of the bead, then I'll loop the string over and push it back through the next hole on the left hand side as you're looking at it. And finally, I'll bring the string back through the final hole and through the loop that's formed on the front of the bead. Then take the tension up and pull it tight. Leave a little bit of string at the end, about half an inch or an inch, so it doesn't slip back through the loop. I'll just try and get this in focus now and hold it in front of the camera so you can take a good look at it and then you can see what I've done. The little bit of extra string doesn't look the tidiest at this stage, but you can cut that off when we're finished up. Once I've done this, I can thread the string through the bridge and put it back onto the guitar. Again, I'll speed this bit up so the video doesn't go on too long and get too boring. But if you need to know how to restring a classical guitar, I'll put a link down below in the description. And before I tune the string up fully or tighten it too far, I need to try and straighten the bead up so they all fall into line, just so it looks neater. But if you want, you can do this right at the end, because even when the guitar's tuned up, the beads do have a little bit of movement in them. I've speeded this bit up again. Because now I've decided I'm going to remove all the strings, I'll do them all in one go. So I'll loosen them right off at the machine heads or the tuners and then release them from there. And once I've done that, I can come to the other end of the guitar and remove them from the bridge. You'll notice that the strings come off at the bridge far more easily if they're not fastened up at the tuners. But watch out for the metal wound strings because they're really sharp and you could either cut yourself or scratch the guitar with them. And it's always a good idea if you're changing the strings to clean those bits you can't clean with the strings in place. On this occasion, I'm just going to clean the bridge off, but quite often I'll clean the fingerboard and the headstock as well. Today I'm using Luthier's Choice fretboard conditioner, even though it's the bridge, but quite often I'll use something like almond oil or lemon oil. But I don't recommend using oils on the bridge of a classical guitar unless you're very careful, because if the oil gets onto the strings, they can either slip or they can even come undone. Either way, it can be a major pain in the neck. 
Right, let's look again at how we thread the bead and I'm doing it with the B string this time. Firstly, we bring the string from the back through the top hole and then we loop the string over and push it through the hole that's on the left as you're looking at it. Now we can come back through the only vacant hole which is the one on your right. Once we've done this we want to open up the loop again and push the string through the loop. And once you've done that you can take up some of the tension on the strings to hold it in place. Remember to leave a little bit of string so that it doesn't slide back through the loop. And that's the string bead fitted on the second string. I just need to put that back on the guitar now. And then, as I did on the previous string, I'll tension it up until it's reasonably tight and then I'll straighten the bead up before I tighten it all the way. I'll skip through the next three strings because we're simply repeating the process we've done for the previous two strings. However, I'll slow down again for the last string because as a review I want to check out the thickest and the most inflexible string and see how easy or hard it is to get onto the bead. One thing I noticed that I need to point out is that the metal wound strings have a softer bit on the end and this is so it's easier to tie it off. However, if you've put a bead on the other end you'll find this really difficult to push through the bridge. So I just cut that bit off to make life easier and then it threads more easily through the bridge and even through the machine heads at the other end. The beads are going on really easily and once you've done it once it's easy to remember so you just repeat the process over and over and I think it's one of these processes like riding a bike once you've done one you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life. And I'd say it's actually a lot easier than a standard stringing technique for a nylon strung guitar. And I think it's going to be a lot more stable. In other words, it's going to lock up more quickly and it's not going to slip at all. The last one I fit is the demonstration bead with the piece of wire threaded through it. So I'm going to have to remove the wire first so I can fit it. For the last string, I'm going to do it slightly different in that I'm going to thread the string through the bridge first and then I'll fit the bead. And this is so I can keep the flexible bit of string at the other end in case I need that to thread it around the machine head. Now I'll thread the final bead onto the end of the final string. And as we did previously, I'll push the string through the top hole in the bead from behind. Then I'll loop the string over and push it back through the left hole as you're looking at it on the screen. Then I'll loop the string again and bring it back through the final hole. Then I want to open up the loop again on the front of the bead and thread the string through there. As you can see, this bit's a little bit fidgety. But if I'm honest, I didn't allow myself enough spare string. If you have a little bit more string, it would be easier to bend it and get it through there. And a great positive for the beads is that even with all that fidgeting and messing about, once you tension up the string a little bit, they still look really neat. So now I've just got to wind this last string onto the machine head and then I can start tuning the guitar up and finishing it off. And I can confirm that the first tune up is a lot quicker because there's less string around the beads to settle than there would be around the bridge normally. 
to finish up the job I just need to tidy up the guitar now and to do this I'll just cut off all the excess strings so the strings are nice and short and neat and then I'll straighten up the beads one last time I also took in any loose ends of the thicker strings, the metal wound ones, just in case there's any sharp edges there, because I don't want to catch myself on those. Now that it's finished and the strings are back on the guitar, and I can take a look at the beads, they look really neat. And aesthetically, I cannot complain at all. And I think I chose the right colour for this particular guitar as well because they look quite classy and neat but they look a little bit different and here's a before picture and an after picture and in my mind the guitar looks a lot more classy now than it did before. Another reason I chose this guitar was because I'd done some fresh recordings just before Christmas and I've saved all those settings into my effects units. So. I'm now going to do the same recordings again using exactly the same settings and then we'll see if the beats have had any effect on the sound. And here's the new recording with the beads on. Here's another recording I did for Christmas. And here's the new recording with the beads on. After doing these tests and also playing around with the guitar for a bit in between filming, I can't honestly tell any difference in the guitar before the beads were fitted and after the beads were fitted. However, it's really hard to tell if there's a very slight difference because of the fact I had to change the strings. Putting new strings on will change the tone very slightly, even though the old strings were only a couple of weeks old. In conclusion then, the first thing I need to point out is that these beads make it considerably easier to change the strings, and it's a lot quicker than the conventional way of changing the strings on a classical guitar. In fact, if I were still gigging, I'd buy two sets of these, 
and I'd have a set pre-threaded onto the strings and keep them in my case for emergencies. So from that point of view alone, they're worth the money. And regarding the effects on the acoustics of your guitar, or the way it sounds, I don't think they have any effect at all, either positive or negative. And this is the best thing really, it's got a neutral effect on the guitar. And regarding the look of the beads, or the aesthetics, the ones I've put on this guitar I think look amazing, and they've really put it up a notch and made it a little bit individual. And the fact that you can get different colours to mix and match I think is a great thing for a youngster anyway. You could do your favourite country or your favourite football team or hockey team, whatever you want to do. And a lot of classical guitars look similar to each other and it'll just make your guitar stand out a little more. And these are probably the only thing I've ever seen that's specifically designed to customise a classical guitar. So again, that's another real positive. I'm sure there'll be people out there who will be thinking perhaps it has a different effect on a proper classical guitar than on this guitar. And I'll have to agree with them. And because of this, I'll be making a second video where I fit a set of beads on a conventional classical guitar. And I'll also try and get hold of a set of the very brightly coloured ones so I can show you those as well. Saying that, purely by chance, the beads I've got left are the red set and the black set. And these are the colours that most people associate with flamenco dancers. So I could actually mix the two sets to produce two sets of red and black. If you're interested in buying a set of these, you can get them off eBay. And I bought these from a trader called Makazi or Makazi 2004. And they arrived really quickly and it was a flawless transaction. And I'll put a link to their items for sale down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to be notified when I upload the follow on video where I fit a set of these beads on a classical guitar, then please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload that video. And I'll also keep uploading various guitar related videos and of course guitar lessons. And if you're looking for free guitar lessons or guitar courses, just visit www.ebooksforguitar.com and there's loads of lessons there that are completely free to view online. Thank you very much for watching.